point in time that it's like, I can't actually do this. Burnout turned into a full-on breakdown. So this resonates for a lot of people because it's, it's, it's resonated for a lot of people I've had conversations with already. Leadership, it can be just like herding cats. Ever tried that before? Welcome to Leadership Herding Cats. Today we're talking to Sam Ferris, recruitment consultant turned decorating contractor, about his extreme burnout experience, which led to cold sweats and physical shaking on a daily basis. Sam shares his experience to help others avoid similar situations. Today you can also help us. Please share this episode with one person that you feel would benefit. But let's hear from Sam. Well, Sam, thanks for thanks for joining me today. Anyway, um, hopefully technology issues are out of the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're kind of dive straight in, really. Um, obviously, want it to be as much of a conversation as possible, but sure. try and get some good, actionable sort of benefits to people that do listen or, or watch. Um, this will go out on obviously for the audio for the podcast as well but we do put it out on our socials long form youtube and stuff like that as well so it will go out um so obviously i don't actually i'm not sure if you're aware but i don't actually know your full story i'm a little bit in the dark all i've been told typical pete you need to speak to sam (laughs) this guy's great um so but he said that you know a lot about avoiding burnout, making big changes, um, and that sort of side of things. So tell me about you. Why does he tell me that you're the person I need to speak to? Yeah, okay, good question. Um, so I've had, I've probably been through two major burnouts, and okay. it's taken a lot to work out what it was that was the problem. Why was I burning out? What, why, what wasn't working in my life that was forcing me into overwhelm and burnout and so my background is I just spent the last nine years running a search and selection business a recruitment agency um, working nationally with real estate companies for the most part Um, very very specialist Um, but I'd also got to the stage in life where and I'm sure this this resonates for a lot of people because it's 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 resonated for a lot of people I've had conversations with already that they feel completely trapped in it. Their bills are X. Their way of making a living is through this job, through this, through running this business. Shit, I can't I can't say goodbye to that. And yeah. I definitely spent the last four at least the last four years of running the business just being chronically dissatisfied it wasn't yes i was earning good money it wasn't about the money um but i also felt like i had to keep going to earn the money because because that's as i say what the hell else was i going to do um yeah i mean i i get that i think that's it's part of human being human isn't it you get into that habit and that sort of cycle where you know where it is and you've it's got to be a tough thing to sort of out look past that and see what's different, isn't it? Well, the question is, I knew I needed to pivot, but I didn't know what I could possibly pivot to that would yeah. enable me to still have the same level of income. Um, yeah. Out of you know the, the realities of what it what, what life actually costs. Um, I mean, long story short. Uh, the burnout turned into a full-on breakdown um, where I ended up with having a lot of psychiatric care, a lot of therapy. Um, I came very close to suicide and I was uh, put into an emergency, kind of they call it a, a step-up house, which is... Um, the intervention before psychiatric hospital. Right. I'd, I'd got to the point that I'd lost all purpose in my life because I hated what I was doing so much, but I didn't know wow. what else I could possibly do. I've got a young son, six and a half at the moment. Um, yeah, and I felt that through not loving what I was doing and through feeling chronically dissatisfied with life, that I was a couple, I, my energy was that of a failure as a father. Um, it just 
and it all got to the point where I'd wake up every morning with just severe anxiety. I'd have panic attacks throughout the day just because of the pressure of trying to force myself to do something that was no longer aligned with who I am as a person. And I've come out of that. I'm still, I'm still running that business. Um, I'm still, I've completely changed the way that I do it in that I have uh, a third party, a third party company doing all the sourcing work for me, and it takes me ten minutes a day of admin, and that's mm-hmm. what I do. Um, but in the meantime, what I've done is, I I used to be a, I used to be a painter and decorator when I was like nineteen to twenty two, and I've yeah. gone back to being a decky full time, and I'm every day now. It's yes, I earn less money, but life is also far more satisfying. Every yeah. day on my job, it's like uh, I turn on music. I, I turn on music in my headphones, and it's just like a movement meditation all day, just focusing on that one thing of yeah. what, one aspect of the prep to get the surface quality perfect. So that 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 one aspect of laying paint to make sure that it is going on flat. There's no tram lines. There's no drops. It, it just just making sure that the coverage is right. And it just becomes that that one constant meditation on that one thing, and through doing that and feeling into my body more and using my body more to work, mm-hmm. is to move all of that energy away from my all of that anxious energy away from my head, and it's just made me far more grounded. But the upheaval process of what you have to let go when what you do for a living, especially when you own a business and you have done it for nearly a decade, it becomes mm. part of your identity. You're giving up part of your ego. You're giving up everything that you think you really know about who you are in order to go and do that. And you have to request yeah. every single assumption about who you are as a human being. I mean, first of all, you know, well done for being brave enough to come on and, and talk about that, because that that's that must be really difficult as much as anything else um but i do think it will be really helpful for other people to to hear that and maybe just know that they're not alone because you know i'll be honest and say funny enough this week has been a a seriously hard week for me and i you know i went home on monday night thinking what the hell am i doing Mm -hmm. um because i think anyone in a position of responsibility no matter what it is will get days like that at least um i suppose it's more when it's constant that it kind of potentially escalates um but yeah definitely well done for that and sort of moving forward but kind of just briefly how did you How did it kind of get to that point? Before we dive too deep into this week's podcast, I want to tell you a little bit about our sponsors, which is Vapor Clean Commercial Cleaning Services. Vapor Clean provides commercial contract cleaning throughout the Southwest. If you run a business with premises that needs cleaning on a daily basis, then we can provide that service for you regularly, sufficiently and consistently to the highest standard. We provide trained professional operatives that are audited and supported the right way, making sure you have the highest standards all year round. So if you want to know more, get in touch. But for now, back to the podcast because obviously so you say you started as painted painted decorator only what what made the change into the recruitment side of things um social conditioning yeah i mean i was only working as a decorator part-time i was also working in you know shops and working in call centers and that type of thing yeah um but i think what happened in terms of the change is 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 social conditioning we're all told that we have to go to university that the what is a successful life is a life where you are judging your your success and whether you've made it on most of the time your physical you know your belongings your status and what your job is um what what car are you driving at the moment you know when's that being upgraded which phone do you have um you know, and if we can't afford those things, then we're judged, then our social conditioning is wired up for us to view ourselves as not being successful, which yeah. is, 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 it's about redefining what successful actually is. And 
So to go back to your question, why? It was the social conditioning. So I ended up, I was, I was working in, I was actually working in sales in a call center selling insurance at the time. Um, car insurance and home insurance outbound cold, cold calling sales is a hard job. Yeah, I was going to say that, that it's a very similar keel as well, isn't it? You know, yeah. I think that's two very difficult thing, jobs to be in sales and recruitment. It's got to be some of the worst. I'd say recruitment is almost the purest form of sales. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Um, and, you know, that there was this, definitely this perception that I was never going to progress within the organisation if I didn't have a degree and I didn't have that education. So I went back to university late after actually not doing particularly well in school, just distinctly average because I was bored and uninterested. Um, I, I, I came out with, with a first class degree in economics years later, um, went back into another sales role again, working in the construction industry or for a, for a firm servicing the construction industry. And, and was that for the money? Was that what was drawing you back in? That was 2011 and that was mid-recession. And um, funnily enough, I, I, I thought I, I wanted to go to work in finance. And mm. even with the first class economics degree, though, it actually precluded me going to any of the main banking houses because to get on my graduate schemes or even be considered, they would look at my A-level results, which would be it. So <laughs> apologies, <laughs> I'm <swearing> here. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, it's fine. <laughs> you can bleep it out. <laughs> so, so my options then, was, now that was 2011 when I graduated. Um, and my options then were um, basically to, to find a job and go back into sales or go and work in a really low level role without much prospects in the finance industry. So off I went back into sales because there was more chance of you know being able to earn money and perhaps that was what I was better suited to um and then off into recruitment after after that yeah and you say you kind of it wasn't the first time basically so you've you've had uh, uh, I, so I I had an exceptionally bullying boss in my first job um I was incredibly incredibly stressed by it um, a year into the job, the my my counterpart left the uh, left the branch we were working at to go and run another branch elsewhere in the country and relocated. Um, and effectively, my workload was put in the position where it pretty much doubled um, yeah. a role where I was being judged on uh, new business sales um, first and foremost, but also responsible for all existing account spending as well. So now I was looking after 110 plus different accounts, um, as well as being kind of which 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 is all which is all you know reactive work. That's okay. They need yeah. or proactive. Okay, what's happening? Let's go for a catch up meeting with this account. Work out what they're doing. Look at what their plans are. What their requirements. Um, and there wasn't any time left or actually mental strain, mental ability left to be completely proactive. And it's obviously much more important to look after existing clients from my perspective, and it's much cheaper too than to continually try and win new business. Um, but yeah, the new business was what I was being judged on still, even though that would have also been disastrous for me. Um, and I still did fairly well on the new business, but after a time with a bullying boss, the, the pressure just got to me. And you know, he said to me, I, I remember, he said to me, um, he said to us in a sales meeting, there were three of us in there, he said, um, well, we've had a really bad month last month, and you know, if things continue like that, that's only going to mean one thing. Um. <laughs> and it was ticking through your mind, yeah, I'm leaving. Is that... <laughs> yeah. and, well, and then, well, then funnily enough, well, then I, I ended up having a panic attack for the first time in my life um, um, in the car. Uh, yeah. Was, as I was trying, because I was sat on Queen Square in the middle of Bristol, going absolutely nowhere. I didn't know what it was, hadn't had nothing like that had happened before. I ended up being off of work for a week, trying to actually process and understand. And this is the boss who uh, then <laughs> sat me down for a coffee and said, uh, just, just to make sure you are okay, this is on, on my return, um, because, you know, 
not going to lie, I was having to start uh, to consider my options. Oh, so he was very supportive then, obviously. And, uh... Very, very supportive and clued up. No, 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 nothing, nothing narcissistic and emotionally cold there at all. No, obviously not. Yeah. <laughs> and that that must pile on to the the emo the emotional strain that you're already under as well. It's kind of it's not helping the situation, is it? It's piling on the pressure a little bit more and a little bit more every time. Completely. Yeah. And that that was what then triggered the move into recruitment because I didn't have to deal with all of the I could just deal on one sales process basically. Yeah. Uh, ended up running my own business for as I said, nearly nine years, and I was very, very good at it, but the stress of the sales and constantly being in this headspace when I'm on a computer and I'm on a phone and I'm hyper-focused and I'm, I'm continually trying to close the next deal, actually, it's, it's, you can only do that for so long and you just get too tired, the thrill of the chase wears out. Did you find when you were running your own business, did you find that there was sort of the extra pressure there because it was, you know, you, it was you responsible for you and other people and, and things like that? Or was it? So I'd say it was actually less pressure. My, I would say that if you're running your own business, you're diversifying your risk. Because yeah. Diversifying your risk because you've got multiple clients and therefore there are multiple places that the tap could be turned off and it could be and it's easy for you to replace it if you're employed yeah you may have some of the business admin taken off of you but actually at the end of the day you've probably got one one decision maker who can turn on or off the money mm. I suppose, yeah that, that's an interesting way to look at it so in that sense it sounds like you were you were kind of being put in that position by that first you know your, your bully boss as you put it in the sense of you know he was bullying you and he was frightening you wasn't he you know yeah fuck up or i'm gonna stop it anyway isn't it so well, well that's, yeah. i mean that's, that's only so much you can buck up because actually you know i was it's not like i wasn't working ridiculously hard um and i was a good salesman yeah it was just there were there were i was being asked to do i was like i was like butter spread over too much bread I was being asked yeah. to do too much and realistically that was two to three people's jobs. And, and that's the thing and you know the, that's what I mean by that in the sense of you can only do so much is you're only one person aren't you it doesn't matter what what sort of thing and I think from from my experience it's quite often in that sense where people do develop burnout because they're trying to do too much and you know I've I Again, I said earlier, I mean, I'm, I'm not having a great week myself this week and I know I'm doing too many hours. I'm running too many things. I'm trying to juggle too much and I'm getting to the end of the day and I'm just completely physically and emotionally drained, mm. which means I'm actually nowhere near as uh, efficient the next day uh, or that current day, to be honest, than I normally would be. Um, so it's managing that as much as anything else. But if you've got someone else above you basically continually piling on the pressure to do more and you don't physically have the time to do it where do you go what do you do and I suppose that's where people cause burnout I suppose or, or experience that isn't it that's when the body just in the body and the mind you just put under too great a degree of stress with too much risk attached to it for too long yeah. um but then they think you know but there's also I mean but there's different kinds of burnout there's you know emotional burnout from people in the care industry and so forth yeah um and i think you know burnout can definitely um look completely different depending on what flavor of work it is that you do yeah and sort of looking back obviously so and i you know i don't want to i don't want to go over things that are too too um too challenging for you so you know if i touch on a <laughs> touch on a sore subject let me know okay, mate it's fine yeah so obviously you got you say you know you you got very close to you know going to a very very dark place you know what what were the early signs or were you just basically unaware until it got to that point oh no i was completely aware and i felt like that the my life was just completely ruled by anxiety i'd wake up in the morning and just almost shaking with anxiety unable to focus on anything and there only goes so long before of your body being able to put up with that and nothing I was trying was making it any better yeah 
Um, obviously, what I needed to do is to change everything in my life in order to get better. But yeah, it's like 2020. But you live with those symptoms for too long, and it's like you, you feel out of control of your emotions. You can't control or feel good, and it's completely stopping you live your day to day life in any kind of normal way. And it only goes so far of being in that situation until actually I'd, I'd, I'd rather, just, rather just go. Yeah. No, that must it must have been very difficult for you. And when you get, you know, when it, what was it that finally triggered the the decision then to make the the drastic change? What was the final straw as such? Um. I think it was when I was just got to that point where I was sitting on the sofa, open up the laptop to do some work, and my brain just could not focus on it. All I had was I was pretty much just staring at the screen blankly. All I could feel was fatigue, no motivation, no idea what the fuck I was supposed to do. Sorry, language. Oh. Uh, <laughs> No idea what, what, what my, my head just couldn't focus on it, and I was just staring at it blankly. And it triggered so much fatigue that I just went to sleep on the sofa instead for half an hour. Um, really? And that's when it got to the point that it's just, yeah, that was the point in time that it's like, I can't actually do this. Yeah. And so, so your actual change, obviously, you're, you're to a degree, you're still running that business, but it's more <laughs> to a degree. But it takes me ten minutes a day of admin to, and a couple of calls yeah. to, to do. And that's it. So I'm don't, I don't tie my my value from it. If I earn money out of it, it's it's a fantastic bonus. If it if it breaks, as long as it breaks even, then it's all good. Yeah. So what did you what did you have to do then to make that change? Where did you, you know, obviously you're doing the decorating now. It sounds very therapeutic, I've got to be honest. That's right up my street, just <laughs> for certain days anyway. But what what were the steps to you making that change and turning things around? Sorry to leave it on a cliffhanger, but you're going to have to tune in next week to hear more from Sam when we discuss actionable ways where you can avoid a similar situation. But we want to hear from you too. Let us know in the comments if you have experienced any type of burnout. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.